Hey everyone, welcome to the Bio Breakthroughs Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Raquel Izumi, the co-founder and chief operations officer and president at Vincerix Pharma. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Jared. I'm super excited. Please tell us about your background and then we'll talk about your company. Absolutely. So um, I have a um, PhD in microbiology and immunology from UCLA. And I've been in drug development now for several decades. And uh, I really got interested in drug development, I think, for a couple really um, key moments in my life. One of them was that uh, right before I started college, my mom got breast cancer. And fortunately, she's alive today. And I'm very thankful for all the research and work that developed the medicines to save her life. And then between uh, my undergraduate degree, which was in biological sciences from UCSB, starting graduate school at UCLA, I worked for two years at Amgen in the lab of um, Dr. Joan Agri. And it was really exciting. She was one of the key scientists that helped develop Lipogen, so one of the first biologics ever approved. She had really great stories about what Amgen did and how they all got together in a hotel room to get those drugs approved. And she also told me about what it was like to meet the first patients that got to take Lipogen. And when they came up to her and told her what a difference in their lives this drug had made. I think those things really shaped me and they sort of give me this passion and this drive. And I decided that I wanted to do really important things in this world and make a difference. And that's what really led me to clinical development. And this is not your first rodeo in, in co-founding a company. Uh, you've, you've done this in the past. Talk talk me through. Does it? Do you feel it? Does it get easier? Is there always these new challenges that pop up along the way? I know a lot of people sitting back that maybe want to start their own company, right? I feel like it's important we highlight this as well. Yes. Uh, no. No. It doesn't get any easier. Um, I think the the story here is really that with the first company that uh, Dr. Hamdi and I co-founded, which was Asserta. We had a vision. We really wanted to start a, a company that would actually have a pipeline and, and be a long lasting company to continue to contribute to science, continue, continue to contribute to um, effective medicines and safe medicines for our patients. The thing was, though, that acalabrutinib just was the first drug that we were really working on. And it was so, success, so successful that the company sold. So we didn't get a chance to really build a company. So when um, when Ahmed came to me and said, OK, we've we've got to do this again, I did kind of raise an eyebrow at him and say, well, this last company just about killed me. <laughs> it was very difficult. And he just said, no, no, we could do it. And um, there's just there's just more of our story to write. And so the way that Vincerix was formed was I had a very clear message to Ahmed. I said, you know, we've worked together on Ibrutinib. We've worked together on Ikalabrutinib whatever my next thing is, it's going to have to be amazing because those two drugs were just so phenomenal. And so he said, absolutely, don't worry. And it took a long time. I mean, it wasn't like morning to night. I mean, we kissed a lot of frogs on the, along the way to try to find something that we were both willing to put our names behind. And fortunately, we have, and we believe we have that in Vincerix. And what a great segue, natural sub a segue too, which I love. Give us an overview of uh, Vincerix today, where things are at, uh, what excites you about this, this new venture? Absolutely. So what was really exciting about Vincerix is that we're working in the antibody drug conjugate field. And so this field has been a long time in development and the concept behind it is really unique. It's, it has a name, which is the magic bullet concept. So the idea is we've been treating patients with um, cytotoxic agents, so chemotherapy, for many decades, and they are effective. But basically, they're systemic poisons. So the reason they kill the cancer cells is because they're poison. But unfortunately, that means that they kill your normal healthy cells as well. And with that comes a lot of toxicity. So the idea behind the antibody drug conjugate was that if we could take those really strong cytotoxic agents and somehow target them only to the cancer cell and therefore sparing the healthy tissue that we would increase the efficacy and decrease the side effects. And it's been decades in development. And um, what's great is in the last few years, even in just the last less than three or five years, there's been a, a, a 
huge increase in the approval. I think at this point now, worldwide, there's 14 antibody drug conjugates approved, which is fantastic. And they're approved for patients with solid tumors and also uh, patients with blood cancers. The thing is, though, there is still, even with the drugs that are approved today, they've got great efficacy, but there's still quite a bit of toxicity. So we feel that the promise of ADC technology has yet to be delivered. And so that's what our company is here to do. What's amazing is we have two incredible scientists who have worked decades on this te technology, our chief scientific officer, Hans Georg, Dr. Hans Georg Larchen, and our chief development officer, Dr. Bea Steltig Ludwig, have been amazing in this field. And what they've done is designed some incredibly elegant science to address some of the shortcomings on the ADC field that we have today. So one of them is we have an incredible linker that is absolutely proprietary. Nobody else has it. It's only linked by a very specific enzyme that tends to be increased in the tumor cells over the healthy tissue. We have a payload. So these cytotoxic agents that I talked about, ours is different. Nobody else has ever used it before. And it's very specific to only when the cell is dividing. So that really limits the toxicity of only dividing cells. And then our scientists have engineered so that once it gets in the cancer cell, it stays in the cancer cells. And even if the cancer cell dies and that payload is released, it doesn't get into normal healthy cells. So we really have gone out of our way to increase the safety profile of our platform. So that's what I'm really excited about. In regards to these candidates, what do you still see as the unmet needs that, that you're continuing to work towards? Absolutely. So I think the, I think the biggest unmet need is really what I talked about. And we call that in this industry is the therapeutic index. I think that there's, there's efficacy and which is wonderful for these, but you want to be able to develop safer drugs. And so our mission is not just to develop drugs for patients, but we want these to be paradigm shifting drugs that are safer than what's out there today. And I think that's the unmet medical need. And that's what is really our, our, our main goal, our main mission. And in terms of, um, you know, your first ADC VIP 943, um, it's, there's, there's potential, right, going into clinic for the second half of 2023, which I can't believe we're already heading into that. Uh, you, you already gave some differentiation um, if there's anything else, uh, and I'd also, I don't know how much you can talk about potentially going into clinic, but if you can talk more about it, great. If not, completely understand. Um, in Absolutely. regards to, yeah, I would love to, would love to dive more yeah. into that actually. So, so this, this, our first candidate is actually for the treatment of um, AML, just, which is a, a bloodborne um, cancer. It's a very common one, especially in the elderly. So when you think about that, as people get older, um, they're not as tolerant to some of the chemotherapies. And so that's really one of the challenges of, of treating patients with AML. So there is an antibody drug conjugate that's out there for the treatment of patients with AML, but it's very toxic. And I think one of the coolest experiments that we did was we, we've taken that drug, which is um, gemtuzumab, and it's approved. And we took the antibody portion of it and we put on our linker in our payload. And then we have our drug, which actually hits a different target with our linker and our payload, which is 943, like VIP 943. And we put them in monkeys just to see how they would compare in terms of safety. And unfortunately, the monkeys um, that got gemtuzumab, which is the drug that's approved and going into patients today, both died. And yet, if you took the same antibody that's part of gemtuzumab and you put in our linker and our warhead, those monkeys did just fine. And then there's VIP 943, which we dosed at even way higher dose than those first two. And those monkeys did perfectly fine as well. So here we were showing a quite a, a huge difference in the safety profile. And then we took it one step further, put those same three drugs in a mouse study of AML to see what the, it looked like in efficacy. And so even with changing the linker and the payload of the gemtuzumab antibody, we had better efficacy but our VIP 943 had the best efficacy of all three drugs. So this is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of differentiating our drugs. And as you look forward the rest of this year, and then let's say even the next five years with Vincerix, what, what is continuing to excite you about your progress? Uh, and I know there's always things that you can't, you can't fully say, right? But in, in terms of what you can say, 
what's exciting you moving forward the rest of this year? And then what's exciting you over the next five years that you can share? Yeah. So the first few years of the company, we've been very focused on our getting our INDs filed and drugs into the clinic, because I think that's absolutely imperative. So the great thing is we've already with, um, I've already talked about our ADCs or antibody drug conjugates. We also have a small molecule drug conjugate, which is a totally new paradigm. And that drug has already started in the clinic. So I'm very excited over the next couple of years to see how that drug does in the clinic. And as you just mentioned, VIP 943 will be in the clinic before the end of the year. This is going to be seminal because I think this will be our opportunity to show the world the actual proof of concept. So everything that we've done up till now has not been in monkeys or we've tested in mice, but the real test is really how it does in humans. And so we're very excited to get our technology into the clinic. We think what it's going to show is that we are absolutely the next generation ADC technology. And I think that'll open a lot of uh, doors to work with other partners, um, big biotech, small biotech. A lot of folks are going to be very interested in how well this drug does in the clinic. So exciting. I'm very excited for you and the team on your continued growth. I want to make sure we we also dive in, um, Raquel, to, you know, you've you've done so much across your career. In building out Vincerex, what have been some of the, the key takeaways from your past experiences that you've been able to apply uh, for, for this uh, company? So there's been a couple of things. One is at the end of the day, I mean, I, and I'll speak very specific about the BTK inhibitors that we worked on. So those, those drugs, um, some of the early testing that you do when you're developing drugs for oncology is you, you throw them in a Petri dish with a bunch of cancer cells. And the idea is if you, if you kill all the cancer cells, then you've got a drug. Uh, BTK inhibitors don't do that. You, you put them in the Petri dish and in, in the, in it's called cytostasis, meaning like the cells stop growing, but they don't necessarily all just die. So, I mean, a lot of some of the early filters that we might have applied would have stopped the development of these drugs early on. And yet today they're one to, I mean, they're a very important drug class for the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So it's really important to understand that until you put a drug into patients, you really don't know how it's going to work. And then the reverse, and then one of the other things that we learned because we did work on ibrutinib and then our company that we founded was a calibrutinib, as we were working um, to raise, raise money, there were a lot of naysayers because the ibrutinib data was out there. Everybody knew how well that drug was doing. And there were a lot of naysayers saying, uh, you know, differentiation on safety doesn't matter. You've already got, the, you're never going to be able to beat this. They're already there. So but we believed in our drug because we had developed a brutinib. We knew that we could do better. We knew that there was a reason to go forward with the next generation. And we didn't listen to those naysayers. And because of that, it, you know, acalabrutinib is, is, is now, I think, last time I heard, actually outselling ibrutinib. So we're, the success of that drug, I think, just makes me sort of double down. If I believe in a drug, then I know it's worth it to put the time, money, and effort to test it. What's interesting about your career too, I love that you continue to stay so, so driven and, and building out this new company because you had so much success the, you know, early on, right? It's, it's not easy to, to replicate that either, right? You said it was such a massive, you know, massive, massive success, the, the first go around. Um, what would you say? I feel everyone I speak with, they feel like they do a lot, right? You wear many hats. What's, what's your superpower that, that, that like Vincerex is, uh, you know, obviously they're lucky to have you involved, but what's that superpower that you think that you really, you know, bring to the organizations that you're, you're starting? I, you know, in all honesty, I think it's just that I'm, I'm very direct into the fact and I, I, you know, it's like when folks work with me, they, they see, you know, I, I just call things how it is. And, um, and that matter of factness, I think, is, a, is, is really vital to sort of stay on point and keep focus in a company. But I think there needs to be a mix. And I think one of the reasons that Achman and I partner so well is he's more the visionary and I'm all the, the practical person. So I'm the one that can help with that vision. 
But at the end of the day, somebody needs to be able to get things done. And that's me. I do wear a lot of hats um, and I will stop at nothing when we've got something that needs to get done. It will happen. If you put it in my hands, I'll be the one to make sure that the ball, I mean, not personally carry that ball over the, <laughs> the goal line, but I'm going to make sure that everything is in place so that it gets carried across the goal line. So yeah, absolutely. Being an effector arm is a big part of what I do. I'm loving the, the sports, uh, how you've incorporated sports in there too. That's, I haven't heard that one. And, uh, we, we need to use that phrase more, carry the ball across the goal line. I like it. Um, well, Raquel, I'm so happy that we were able to have you on. I hope we can have you on again in the future. Maybe we can get you on a panel too with some of your peers and we can even dive deeper, but this was a great start. And again, thank you so much for joining me on the bio breakthroughs podcast. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you.